the up button and therefore we can shortly enjoy our first match of the day. This is going to be ASDF on the red side versus Unique on the blue side. Let's have a look at the splits. Very defensive at the moment. No crosses coming out from either team. We're going to see Ellie's going over to the close points. We're going to see an equal cross of uh, potentially four over towards the mid as well. We're going to see two players though from red team just being a little bit more cautious and try aware of that cross. Nothing's happening, so need to be careful about that because we're going to be in a 3v2 situation over on mid, Nick, in favor of the possibly the blue team at the moment. Yeah, we're going to yeah, see that. Yeah, the blue team is a bit quicker on the end gauge. We see Xerix from red coming in from behind. Now 3v3. We have the... Uh, Wolf just having an eye on the back point. Both points capped almost at the same time. A little bit of a delay on the red side. Therefore, slight advantage. One point at the moment. For the blue team, Naps are nicely positioned on top of the ledge on the high ground of the keep. And we see the damage on Bullet. He might have been caught out of position. Immediately goes for the renewed focus to negate that. But needs to get out of there or just wants to get the last bit of burst that he can to assist his team in a nice position to get the rest. The knockback comes out and the stomp is done first down on the side of the blue team advantage now for the red if we ignore the health pools yeah that's it i mean at the moment we did see a little bit of trouble for amsterdam and whatnot but you know he can sustain himself quite low he's actually trying to take down in Modium at the moment he's really low on hp coming a little bit away from his team there recommend you taking him down there well i've probably said that name wrong he amsterdam is going to go out so we've equalized the fight but we have seen the respawn coming out from bullet of course he's been able to get over to the henge before the potential decap from slinger who's just tried to go over there so good timing actually to be honest probably that death just saved the cap over at the henge in all honesty yeah, yeah, it did. And now we're going to see both moving back to the mid fight. We have a battle standard out to get the rest uh, on that side now. Amsterdam, is he going to move? Yeah, we're going to see a switch uh, slinger back to no, just dropping the fiery greatsword to get him there a bit quicker, maybe. Or he, he seems very defensive. I don't know if that's a good idea at the moment because unique as well. Just having an eye on the back point with Quove there, the elementalist, uh, maybe now crossing over to the beach, but very hesitant on that. He is nervous. He, just, he doesn't want to risk it because he doesn't want to lose that close point at the moment. The scores are very equal. Oh, and, and they kept the midpoint. Oh. Well, what happened there? Was Did Bullet, oh, Bullet must have used something there to actually... Oh, no, he didn't use... He did use renewed focus. Okay, let's just come off cooldown there. Must have been a tiny little bit of a... So a little bit of a issue, miscommunication yeah, with, 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 with uh, using the renewed focus. Renewed focus, of course, the uh, Guardian doesn't count as a player on the point for that duration that renewed focus is active. Therefore, uh, they didn't have anyone else on the point. So Cap goes over to the red yeah. team, getting a big advantage now since the fight is also going somewhat in the favor. Nice knockback. Dante going in downstate as a counter move, getting bullet back up. Now maybe the Stomp Xerix can't really do anything against it. And the Cap is almost lost because Dante died off point and Xerix has to move off point. Amsterdam not trying to get on it and keep it neutral with Napso from the side, but Unique seems to have taken the advantage here now this is all safety you know again like what we saw in the um, the tournaments recently especially in TG, um the old school guild wars 2 play of all fighting on the mid cap like you know keeping the clothes all fighting on the mid that's where it all ends and that's where it all begins you know it's it's very much it's 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 not panic play, it's more defensive and it's just more reliable, you know, at this at this moment. They can they know where everyone is on the map because everyone is here and you know, it's whoever's gonna win these fights and get and make a mistake. And at the moment it's the blue team that are making those mistakes. We're hundred and fifty points almost to the red team, almost hundred and twenty to the blue. And we could see a couple of decaps coming out. You wanna see these thieves no sorry, the thief on the side of blue could go for a decap, which is he is actually doing that right now. That's something they need to do to pull the red team out of the mid so that they can potentially win that fight over there yeah he's trying that now the first aggressive move we've seen all match long slinger is trying to get on the point fast enough manages to uh to prevent the cap there and is now in a 1v1 with ishi or ricky as we wanted to call him ah uh, does he really want that 1v1 it, it's gonna take a while at least but he might just be able to wait for the reinforcements coming in from the side we do have two people from the red, red team and bullet coming in as well bullet could put down a large amount of pressure but oh he's gonna leave him there Mario Kreider coming in from behind maybe being able to get him back up on mid we have Quoth down so red team taking 
uh, the midpoint again. They might have overcommitted a little bit. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. I mean, Ricky, Rick, uh, Ricky, sorry, could have gone to mid there really to help out Quivo because he's quite fast because they've got that bunker potential over on that mine point. It's not going to be over any time quick and they could have just left it. But now the thing is they're not even going to capitalize on getting that D cap to get the full cap. They, uh, they're sending more people in. At least Red Team haven't gone for the D cap over on the Henge. So that means Quivo can get back into the map potentially for a 1v1 on mid or to help over on the far. But that would be kind kind of risky but the thing is blue team are losing this fight at the moment they keep going down they are resing which is very good oh, I'm not sure that's going to happen for Ricky now as he does point pour onto the point where all the AOE is as well so he needs to be very careful here and uh, yeah I don't think they're going to be able to save him he has just died there so Milo Cry very low on HP no cooldowns really either he's got his heal back up five seconds but he's had to retreat off node and red team have taken back the mine so we're very much in advantage for these guys again but I don't think um, Blue Team aren't really having much luck in these team fights at the moment. Well, they had a somewhat solid, uh, solid state at the at the midpoint, but yeah. ju just the first sign of aggression Finishing. immediately uh, got them into a really unfortunate situation with them over committing to the far point instead of just leaving it at the D cap and then going back retreating to the midpoint, uh, letting mm. Quoth die there all by himself. Yeah, it's the decisions of, yeah, the overcommitting and, like you said, you know, just... <laughs> oh, but you kind of want to sing that song, really, when that happened. <laughs> Maybe another time. But in Genie Modi and just going down over towards the mine node as well, Blue Team pulling back four members of the Blue Team now, wondering whether or not they should go to mid. They need to make these decisions just a bit quicker, to be honest, to join Quivo, to take him out quite quickly. Red Team doing a good job of being very defensive at the moment as... There is obviously a motorbike now in Guild Wars 2 <laughs> that I've missed. But um, <laughs> Kuve is still under some pressure. He should be okay, but he's actually just pushing over to the east side of the nodes to just offer up some more damage on Amsterdam, who's very low at the moment as well. And getting on point to die um, to get to Danta is very a good idea because his res is fast, the res is good, and now the pressure has just been reversed over onto Kuve now. So this fight is very equal at mid at the moment. They need to be quite careful because Xerx is very low. He's actually doing a bit of parkour around the... Oh. Oh. South side of the keep, but they can down him through that gate, so he's going to go down. So unfortunately, that didn't really pay off for him. And uh, Blue Team might have a slight advantage here now. Yeah, they are having the advantage in the big team fights, man. But it's it's gonna be some while. Although the decap and Genium Odium on the far point, so Red Team needs to commit to the midpoint to actually keep it. And that even though they are winning, still managing to get the decap. The problem is now the hench is open, and Xerx is gonna uh, Xerx is gonna notice that. Yeah, decap on the far point. We have Quo falling back. They need to pretty much abandon the midpoint, I think, if they want to keep both outer points. Yeah, this is the thing. They, I mean, the the thing is, is if they have a little bit of pressure there. I mean, with Danzo there, is it's not really de it's not decapped either. It feels like a bit of a waste. Like you can get involved elsewhere. But as long as Blue Team are going to keep two players there fully, they they're not doing themselves any favors, to be honest. No, they're they're really a bit short on all points now. They might get the mid now with the stomp on Dan uh, on Dante, but uh, well, close is looking kind of okay since we have the bunker guardian and yeah. elementalist combination. But again, Odium getting into some trouble. Bullet there for the assistance. Now came the move they should have made earlier. Focus on the outer points. They really want to go for the three cap, which might happen. The respawn or was it the awesome. respawn? No, just the falling back manages to. Uh, make the red team retreat from the far point and therefore going back to the mid and now it it paid off uh, it paid off it it worked itself out i think it was a <laughs> bit of a of an unfortunate move but it worked out due to the reaction of the red team i mean they it was that and also the matchups they put their players in you know they could actually like ingenium and was over on mine in a 1v2 and can sustain there long enough and survive long enough to actually enable them to pick up the mid quickly but now what we're going to see because we've seen respawns from the blue team and deaths we could see a potential quick pickup of mid as they start to outnumber them there three or four to two they should be able to get a two cap back quite quickly unless blue can get back to mid and uh re-engage quite quickly which is actually what's ha what's happening right now this is good so i think they've actually got the oh. decap oh very close one tick they just need a bit of a knock back to try and get cuve off there he does have stability up as well so he needs to not make a mistake and they need to get back on the node and they know they need to res which is very positive as well but the decap is quite important we're very close 
close in the game. We're only 13 points ahead for blue, but they do have the two cap at the moment. We have the bosses up. This might come to a boss kill at the end, Nick. It might, but every second that the blue team is able to hold this point. Oh, we have the Entangle coming out. Refuge to get the rest up. Bullet is back up, but still in the midst of the cleave. Zarek. Uh, Zarek is trying to line off side there. And we have Ricky coming in from the side. Flying some damage. Quo for the stomp. Maybe we have the static getting some stuns, but the damage is not enough oh, to go team. against three people resing. Come on, it's like it's like some kind of in unison. They all just jumped like the same same time. Bang, they're all in. Bang. That's how it has to up. be, man. <laughs> it's beautiful, beautiful resin from the red team. They're doing a fantastic job with that, but they need to come back into this because the blue team they need to be aware of the score and the time. The, the time isn't so bad because we've still got four minutes, but they're gonna keep getting these ticks. Oh. They need someone to start hitting the bosses fast. Yeah. Two bosses isn't gonna be enough at the moment. Two bosses is well, barely, barely going to be enough. Maybe some stomps will make up for it, but the stomps are well. going to come yeah. over to the blue side. We have the red team still fighting 3v3 in mid now, and it looks good for the blue team. Slinger is attacking on the far point, pretty much the only option, but it's too late. It's too late in the mm -hmm. game, and now Ishi uh, or Ricky is actually going for the decap now. Decap on the uh, while I uh. have, while I have a bug with the uh, with some kind of guardian bubble there. So that free cap, that free cap changed the entire game, and how they distributed their players across the points was just phenomenal. Really good, really good play. Red, Red made a bit of a mistake there. To be honest, yeah, yeah, I think that the three cap worked out <coughs> was more due to the fact that uh, ASDF made a mistake rather mm. than it was that Unique played it well. The move in itself yeah, was questionable. Mm -hmm. But it played out in their favor. So, yeah, it was kind of a mix of both, like you said. I mean, it was it was nice. I did like how they put the players on across the map though in the different matchups. It was perfect. Just the timing was good. But like you said, I think you know red team doing what they did, having the bunker at mid as well could have just run off. It was a bit of a waste of time. But hey ho, I think he would have realized he realized that you know if he just run off with his, the thief just nailing him from behind, you know he would have just taken him out and it would have been pointless anyway. So. Hey ho, maybe we can see him come back in this. Uh, we could just ask them to ready up and talk about it as that happens because yeah, sure. it's, we know it's, how it's long gonna be a bit. it takes for people yeah, to and, click and a button. We have, a, we have four <laughs> games this time around since we are in the round of 16. Not yes. immediately in the quarterfinals. That's it as well. So because on we this map, so many good teams. <laughs> we do, we do. Maybe there'll be <laughs> something where we want to, I don't know or something else but maybe not because we've got to get so many teams through um and we have the na cup after as well as of course so yeah. we need to uh kind of move along but yes uh in this map um how how the other i mean it's it we could just quickly describe exactly what the map uh is about and just in case because we are on the guild wars 2 channel just a quick description yeah, sure. this is the same exact uh way that the other map works but there are a couple of, of exceptions there are free capture points you capture a point you score points on the board of course but there is something else where you can get some points to get these points you need to attack the lord the Lord is located in each of the team's bases. Blues is in the top right-hand corner of the map. The red team's is in the bottom left-hand corner of the map. If you kill the Lord, you get 150 points. So if you get to 350, you will get insta-win. And in Guild Wars 2 SPVP, especially in the EU, we are seeing the Lord Rush mechanic used more heavily recently than anything else. But we are going to go... I have to say, I'm, I'm not too sure that these teams are really the Lord Rush type. We've seen how too defensive safe. they've played. Mm. They, they've played way too safe. It's gonna be a big mid-team fight. I'm even, I, I'm even doubting that we see three-point aggression. No, it's two-point aggression Again, from both yeah. teams. It's just gonna be out of point cap for both at pretty much the same time. Although a little bit earlier for the blue team, so slight advantage there. And now they also can move to the mid earlier. Very defensive from the red team, still staying with Xerix and uh, and Napsol there. And the blue team could have engaged, but they are so defensive they aren't engaging what is happening here I'm not too sure we're starting to see it now here we go um but basically i mean 
like you said, I think they're just trying to move together. If you look at the red team, they're very much in this south side of the point at the moment. Danto just making sure that those ticks aren't coming in, but he needs to be careful. If he gets a move mobilized off point, that can be very dangerous. But there's trying to section people off. It's always going to be Bullet Punch who's the main target. He's the, he's the weakest one, not in terms of skill, of course. I mean, but in terms of taking him out of the fight, they can do that. But look what red just did. Exactly what I said. They've gone off no too much. They've actually just completely ignored the point and they focused so hard on bullet bullet pushed pulled off point and was aware of that i mean i guarantee you he probably played that quite well even if he dies now it's worth it because they got the node i mean that is something you don't really see every day I'm, and i'm really surprised that uh with the kind of line moving towards the waterfall point that we didn't see a decap attempt on the waterfall they just mm -hmm. attacked and focused on the mid side in the meantime ricky just went for the decap on quarry so just complete dominance at the moment for unique yeah red team are very much pitching like they're putting themselves they're putting all their eggs into one basket basically it's we need it to win like the that. team fight and yeah not, not, and not then, really much moving around on the map they were before as well they were winning most of the like most of the team fights that we saw at mid they were well either that or they were pushing blue away but they've started to lose them a lot more now because it feels like blue in the first in the first game were very they were just rusty at the beginning but they've just you know they're improving their rotations all right they've just lost the mid cap actually by milo crater going off node or using that renewed focus of course so you've got to be careful so. on that um but you know they could get a decap but i do feel that quivo would actually be quick enough to get back there to make sure that doesn't happen whereas i don't feel that's happening on the red team at the moment i think well the red team is applying some pressure to the midpoint we have riku ishii now really Quarter quarter HP. No, is trying to go for the decap stealth and going through. We have nobody paying any attention there. We already have bullet moving to the far point to defend it afterwards. Although maybe just chasing whoever will come to defend it. Zarex respawning, going to the quarry. But Riku Ishii do does does he want the? No, he doesn't no, want no, the one v one. Just wanted to say that would not have been a smart idea. Falling back to the mid fight where red team is holding up, but not really doing much. We have a chase with bullet. He's trying to escape. Of course, as you said. The easiest point of aggression there for the red team to just take out Bullet, but Milo is on it. Rest coming in from two people, Quove as well from the side, and we have Ishii applying some pressure on the people standing outside. Zarex now in a good position to apply some damage on Bullet, and now we don't have the rest of Unique in a good position to actually get him back up. So first down may be able to turn this into an advantage with Ishii going down right afterwards. We have Quoth trying to get the rest again. Odium is there as well. Two people now, but the damage is too much and they took too long to start with the rest attempt. And the aggression comes now from Nap, so trying to go, trying to take advantage of his uh, fleet foot, or what was it called? Uh, sorry, the power shoes trait. Power shoes, exactly. Well, just to get not going to be quicker. not going to be enough against the fiery greatsword, though. Um, sorry, uh, maybe I just read that wrong. What did you mean? <laughs> what the speed? Yeah. Oh right, yeah, yeah. Sorry, power shoes trait. Yeah, yeah. I mean it's the extra twenty five percent permanent, which you know is quite nice. But the thing is, when you've got more when you've got more boons on you as well, it's very nice, and it's the extra vigor that he's missing when he's got those power shoes, of course. So I'm still not hundred percent sure about that trait, but you know it's working for him at the moment. And Napsaw is a very good engineer, and I do like the fact that he's got slick shoes, so he can gain some extra speed, especially from his toolkit. Um, but yeah, he seems to be doing oh, okay. Odium is, got, be is being a hero here with the dodges really on point. We had some Sigil procs, <laughs> but those went into nowhere. No res attempt even on Odium. Uh, he's just going to go down. Bullet still on point. We have Quove on the side. Do we have anyone keeping an eye on the waterfall? No, but the red team just doesn't have the players to be aggressive on the far note. This is uh, a year ago. Guild Wars 2 play, man, at the moment. Yeah, kind <laughs> it's of. like ultimate defensive. Like, when it, when there's something on the line, we it seems to get to this point, you know, where they're just like, oh, I don't, don't want to risk something because it might be a mistake, but, you know, sometimes the risk, when you go for risk, you, you know, you get maximum re reward, and uh, Ricky is the one who's doing that. He's stealthing past, uh, sorry, um, Slinger at the moment. No, he's not. He's actually going to stay, come pull back, I think. Uh, knowing that he's potentially not going to get that decap unless he runs into the point. So Ricky's been very patient, very patient, and he's, he's paying off a little bit at the moment, but needs to be careful because he needs to try and get in and do some damage on these low low targets like Amsterdam, who's very low, always very low, and he's always the, the focus. focus already we are going see. down. We have the storm yeah, bullet, but a little bit too late for the rally on Amsterdam there. Oh, Ricky and some problem. Oh, Napster just spamming. 
we have the condition removed from uh, Shadow's Embrace and there's Storm coming through on Danta. Now the Guardian is taken out and Riku Ishii makes the one right choice. If a Thief is low, if a Thief is in Stealth, go for the decap. And that might actually happen out of Stealth now, but Slinger, he smelled it. He, he, he knew <laughs> it was going to happen, but going into the fight so low that he might actually lose this he 1v1. Damage incoming. Going down, 5 field down, but that's not going to change anything. Also half HP on Ricky, uh, but that's going to be it in a couple of seconds. So double auto point cap because we have no reaction whatsoever from the red, the red team? team. Where are they? They're dying. That's what's happening. Amsterdam down at mid. We're going to see... Zerix coming into mid node as well. Probably needed really to head over to the close. As soon as Ingenium's down and out of this fight, they need to make sure they head over there. Unless the res is going to come, I don't think it is. They need to start sending someone either to Waterfall or over to the quarry. Now, when as we get to this point of the game, only 80 points ahead. If I was red team, and I'm like, this is a serious actual dis decision, like... A potential Lord Rush might be something they need to think about. They need to try and get a node and get back into the fight quickly and back into the map, which they're doing at the moment over on Quarry. But I oh, do think they now, need to start now are more we going to see Ingenium Odium coming to the Quarry node? I think that is pretty much where he is needed. Bullet can survive for a bit, but after the renewed focus, he pretty much has thrown away his defensive uh, capabilities. A bit of Shield of Warfare of Judgment, that's done now. He is completely open to an attack. He has the burning. He has some condition poisons on him. Ricky is down. And Odium is not going to come fast enough. Mitocrite and Odium are pulling back uh, to the midpoint. That is still neutral. And and finally, finally, we have a decap mm -hmm. and now a red cap on the waterfall node for the first time in this game. And this is the choice they now have to make. You know, if they can keep the two outer nodes and catch up, then, you know, they won't go for a Lord, likely. Um, we've got seven and a half minutes in the game, so time isn't really an issue at the moment. It is for Blue. But Blue only need 50 points. Um, I think also, and... also an important thing to notice is that they managed to turn it around before the Blue yes. team reached the three, uh, 350 point mark uh, as to not have the pressure of a possible Lord Rush on yourself while you're trying to gain map control. Exactly. So it's, there is quite a few options here, actually. It's quite nice for Red at the moment, but they still need to gain, you know, another 80, 80 points. So just make sure this game is fairly safe for them. And maybe, you know, they probably won't actually go for a Lord Kill at all. I mean, they've got the people in the right place. They've got um, Danto at the mid. Uh, cute Xerix is around, kind of just kiting as much as possible. Napsaw's going to come in as well. They're aware of where the blue team is, and that's the important thing. They need to make sure they're keeping an eye on Ricky. And Ricky's actually all the way over on the waterfall, you know. So although it won't take him a long time to get over there by the time he does to get that decap it's going to be a significant amount of time and he's actually gone down over on the waterfall we are going to see bullet punch coming in for the rest potentially not sure it's going to happen he's so oh, close he's to getting trying now we have the away? pot we oh, have no, we sure have the pot no there. reaction he would have got gotten him up but the oh, second no. rest try should be Amst amsterdam did interrupt his own stomp so loads of misplays well. in that single <laughs> down state there Look at the blue team, they're actually pulling back towards, it looks like everyone's trying to go off node, make sure you stay on, Dante's over there, and if, look at the red team coming back to get that the, all those boons and whatnot from the Guardian there, really nice. I, lo I love red team's movement when they're working as a team together on the point, it's really good. And look at that, taking bullet punch down. Zerix needs to just be careful, he doesn't need to get involved in that cleaver and everything over there, maybe to offer up some pressure. He's come off the node and he's gone back up, he's going to have his heal back up as well, so he's going to be okay for now but he's doing a nice job but he's gonna get all oh, mobilized by ricky ricky's gonna go for that blind stomp he's gonna take him out yeah no the interrupt i oh, did get down in the end that's a really nice job from him red secure the waterfall and it leads them into the lead with 335 points to 312 and blue team need to pick it up quick <laughs> quick is the word there because uh with the double cap and really no it doesn't look like the blue team could do anything except go for the completely free quarry point. Why yeah. is the entire red team in mid at the moment? That is completely overcommitting. We now have the reaction from Slinger uh, going back. Naps was trying to hold off the rest of the blue team, but they will have to sacrifice oh, Bullet Punch using that free quarry. on the scepter. No. no, I thought Bullet Punch was going to use his free on the scepter to just keep him out of the point there, but he didn't actually. So it might have been fairly useful. I think he has some stability up there, which is why he didn't. Sling is actually going to go down on this point very quickly. It's just that damage coming out from Ingenium and also Bullet, which means they can hopefully Bullet can cleave 
to get him down, but that's not going to happen. Oh, look at Napsor, so low as well, but I think he's going to go down as well. And if Blue can actually pick up this point and get to 350, that might be a last ditch hope for them to come back into the game. We'll have oh, to see, but we... team already opening okay, gates, it. so preparing for a possible Lord Rush. So I think if we see the red team losing map control, which at the moment looks like it's thing is uh, using the awkwardly placed minecart to have as much... Uh, <laughs> as little damage on them as possible bullet kind of already done his part he's not going to do that much damage for quite a while although there oh, we go kudon's coming back up they got the midpoint and i think now is the time oh. for the red team to move for lord rush if it's ever going to happen but look at now ricky's actually they're so paranoid they don't know where the red team members are this communication is you know he's gone back there to check and like, fair enough, but what he needed to do was communicate with the rest of his team members to be aware of where the rest of the team is, you know, and Red are actually starting to move. Amsterdam yeah, going in, blue. we're going to see Napsor as well. So we're going to see, oh, this is good for them. Oh, it's going to be a Lord race. It's going to be a Lord right race. We have attacks on both teams with a no. slight difference that uh, the... The red gate still in. needed to be opened. Oh, okay, Two men going for the blue lord. Keep an eye on, and I'll keep an eye on the other one. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm going to watch the red lord. <laughs> okay, I'm watching blue lord. Blue lord's currently at eighty percent, going down quite quickly now. Fifty percent. We're going to see. Oh, nice one from Napsor bringing out that um, supply crate to interrupt. I'm not sure he's going to heal there. To be honest, a lot of boons on the blue lord. Blue lord's at sixty percent. Have what's on the on the red lord at the moment? Oh, red lord currently at maybe twenty percent, ten percent, fifteen percent. We do have the heal. Is the interrupt going to come? No interrupt. So close with the lord, but the damage is still on him. How is the blue lord? It's going to go down in three, two, one. The there we go. 